So I believe that God has a specific task for America, a very big task, something that no other country's done before. And I think God knows that many Americans will do it, and it doesn't have to be everyone, but it'll be enough that it will be um, the first time in history. It goes back to Psalm 81. So this is uh, God uh, speaking about the Israeli, is Israel. You shall have no foreign God among you. You shall not worship any other God than me. I am the Lord your God who brought you um, up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. What he meant by filling it was um, with his word. Um, but my people would not listen to me. Okay, this is the key. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own devices. Now on this page, just replace Israel with America. If my people would only listen to me, if America would only follow my ways, how quickly I would subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But you would be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. I, I think um, that that's what America's role is, is to do the opposite uh, and to submit. I, I know people don't like that word, but again, when you submit, you actually gain freedom. You do. You just don't realize it until you do it. Um, but you do. I'm saying it from experience. So whether people want to admit it or not, everybody in, in this world has this this void okay you do you don't have to be an alcoholic to have this void but people will use vices to fill this void I believe everybody has this most people it's this void inside that most people will walk around their whole life just feeling sort of like there's just something missing there's something missing there's just you know I have the perfect home um, I have the perfect wife or husband I have the perfect child like every can but there's just this one piece and I can't quite put my finger on it but we'll use vices okay I mean in my case I used alcohol for many years now many people that uh, drink will go you know say oh I drink because of my childhood or I drink because of this no no you drink what if you get to, really to the root of it and you, you that's the reason we have to do a moral inventory is to put all that garbage to the side because that's not what it was what we were kept trying to fill wasn't the trauma but, but more the trauma of the this this break with the Holy Spirit. And I think the break happens in this world because it's run by the wicked one. It helps to kind of, it, it's not that it's it, it goes away from you. It's still always inside of you. But there's this separation that takes place. I, I talked about this a long time ago. Um, it's like with little wounds that happen to you, like being bullied in school or it could be a big trauma that happens and it kind of separates you. I think I think it's the, the the this world does it on purpose. And so then you kind of cuz you can see it in kids when they're like you, little kids before they go off to school, toddlers, um that free spirit in them. It's like they're all fully intact. But then something happens along the way and people say, "Oh, it's just cuz they grow up." Yeah, but there's something that kind of gets separated. Um, so it's the Holy Spirit. It's still there, but it that's the void. That's the, the empty space inside that people will use sex, will use gambling, will use drugs, will use alcohol, will work, workaholism. Um, it could be any addiction. I mean, obviously, if you have an addiction to chalk, I mean, an addiction where it um, you're you're trying to fill something and, and you keep doing it compulsively. Because you're trying to fill something. And it gives you some sort of, um, like, um, you know, that high feeling. So that, you know, that can be, be accomplished not uh, with alcohol or it can be accomplished with uh, gambling, sex, workaholic. Getting that high from it where it temporarily seems like it fills the void, but it doesn't. Again, because it's, it's a bucket with a hole in it. So no, the only thing that will um, fill that bucket, fill that hole, is the Holy Spirit. 
So I came across that, I said, like 30 plus years ago, and it just dawned on me after like four months of sobriety. I'm just, I was like in a meeting and I just said, wait a minute, wait, wait, I don't know where am I, who am I, who is this person? It was like I was just in this fog or something. I was just going through the motions and then all of a sudden it was like, and, and everything changed from there. Now I've strayed off the path at times and always, I always to my detriment really, I mean, not, not, not that I would drink, but, um, just it, you end up realizing that the more you turn things over, the Holy Spirit is the helper for a reason. It's to guide you. It's, it's, it's Jesus, spirit. So people don't have to believe that, but I think there's enough evidence in this world that we have a lot of people, whether they're, it, it doesn't mean they're mentally ill, but most people walking through life. And as they get older, I think it probably dawns on them more than when they're younger. Um, but that there's just always something missing. Even if you don't have an addiction problem, like if you have any self-awareness, you know, there was just something is always just not right. Even I can be the happiest I am or the sad, but just, just there's always that hole. Well, it's because the Holy Spirit is supposed to be in that place. So, um, that's what this world has, you know, that's the affliction I think everyone has. Um, and so in order to do not what the Israel, uh, Israel did, it means that there has to be, it, it, obviously you wouldn't get all of Americans to pray to have the whole, know the Holy Spirit, but I, I think it would just need to be a small amount. I mean, bigger than the amount now, because I don't think a lot of people understand that the churches don't teach enough about it. I don't, cause I don't think many of the priests under or past, well, priests, the pastors understand it, but that's the key. That's always what God wanted. That's always what God wanted because that's the reason God allows, like people think God allows the horrible things to happen. Like, Oh, um, if you're an alcoholic, God just is letting me go through all this. Yeah, he will. He will. He will let you hit rock bottom. It may take you a long time to get there, but he, he keep letting you hit it. Now, the socialists in this country will want to come and save you, and it won't help you. I, I've, I've had so many arguments with social workers, not all, some of them get it, over the years in my career that I'm like, no, when alcoholics have consequences they, that, for their actions, they need to be held responsible. Don't you socialists go and then try to bail them out? Because many times it's them going through those consequences that saves them. I've seen that happen with patients. But yet social workers would be like, hey, hey, because they're more on that side where, you know, no, we have to go in and help. And the best way to help sometimes is not to step in and try to save everyone. The be that's the best way you can save people many times is sometimes you have to let them suffer so that they help pull themselves up. So that's why I don't like the socialism stuff. It, it doesn't really care about anybody because God in his infinite wisdom will let you suffer. And for a bigger reason than what I'm saying, because it strips away of the ego. It's much, much easier to receive the Holy Spirit when you can recognize your own weaknesses. Um, you don't have to recognize them to the rest of the world, but to God. But to God in, in your living room, whatever. And really look at that and say, yes, I'm weak in this area. That that's because you cannot receive the Spirit on an, with an ego-filled attitude or heart. So, I mean, not, you, you can't, it can't ignite in you, put it that way. And, and it may ignite in you and you not even know it. Like in my case, it was like four months down the line. I, I don't know when it happened. It didn't happen at that moment. I don't think it was more just, I recognized it at that moment. So that's what I think God wants America to do. And America then would be the first country in the world that actually did exactly what God wanted, which was submit to me so that you can truly see that I can make your country a heaven on earth.